You're traveling through another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. A journey into a wondrous land whose boundaries are those of imagination. Your next stop, the Twilight Zone. John, dear. John, your breakfast is ready. John? Didn't you hear me? I said... John? I, I heard you, Martha. You've worked hard. Seen the good times and the hard times. What are you doing? <laughs> Tying my shoes. Are you all right? <laughs> oh, yeah, yes, of course. Perhaps we should stay home. <sighs> G give me a moment. And now, with the kids grown up, you're ready to retire and enjoy the good life. Shouldn't you make the most of your golden years? If you'd rather go another day. No, no. I'm sure they'll let us change the appointment. After waiting so long, I, I, I won't hear of it, Martha. A whole world out there, yours for the taking. A world of travel, adventure, all the things you've wanted to do. And now you have the time to do them together. Very well, then. I've made your breakfast. I I'll be right there. So don't waste another minute. Call the New Life Corporation today for your illustrated brochure. The cost is surprisingly affordable for so much. Remember, this is your time in the sun. Shouldn't you make the most of it? The New Life Corporation, where we make all your dreams come true. Uh. Oh, darling, be careful. I said, give me a moment. Lie down. I'll bring you a tray. Martha, if you don't mind, I, I, I think I'll skip breakfast this morning. Is it, is it the pain again? It's only angina. Nothing to worry about. But I do worry. Let me call the doctor, please. Nonsense. He's done all he can. There's no point. Oh, John. John, what are we going to do? You know as well as I, we must. We must go. There's simply no more time. <laughs> if you're sure. Of course I'm sure. Oh, John. There, there. It'll be all right. You'll see. And now, back to our program on the Vacation Channel. Adventure for Two in Paradise. Mr. and Mrs. John Holt, two gentle aging people who slowly and with trembling fingers turn the last pages of the Book of Life and hope against logic and the preordain that some magic printing press will add to this book another limited edition. But these two senior citizens happen to live in the future, only a few years from now, but a time when almost nothing is impossible. Mr. and Mrs. Holt, in their twilight years, who are about to discover that they've entered a zone of the very same name. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story... The Trade-Ins, starring H.M. Winant and Peggy Weber, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Which floor is it? Be patient, Martha. It will soon be there. Morning, folks. Good morning. I wonder. Martha? Yes? Can I help you? No, no thank you. The New Life Corporation? That's right. Um, 67th floor. Straight ahead when you get off the elevator. You can't miss it. Thank you, young man. That's very kind. No problem. Well, this is my stop. Take care, folks. Do you think he was one of them? Hmm? One of their clients? Oh, I doubt it. Just a businessman on his way to work. But he was so young. Everyone is young, Martha. The world is for the young. Ah, here's our floor. You look nice, dear. So handsome in your suit. <laughs> Very old suit. But I'm, I'm sure it doesn't matter as long as we have the money. You brought it? In my coat pocket. All of it? Don't worry, it's safe and sound. 
New Life Corporation, please hold. Hello. You must be... Mr. and Mrs. Holt. Of course. Won't you take a seat? We have an appointment. With Mr. Vance. Certainly. I'll tell him you're here. Thank you kindly. I have a Mr. and Mrs. Holt to see you. Yes, sir. He'll be right out. Can I get you anything? Coffee? A soft drink? No, no. It won't be long. There are some e-books in the waiting area. That's all right. My eyes, you see. He has trouble reading, even with his glasses. Please, Martha. I'm sure the young lady isn't interested in such things. Mr. and Mrs. Holt. Mr. Vance. We've spoken on the phone. How nice to finally meet. Won't you come this way? Now then, let me see. You're 79 years old, Mr. Holt? That's correct. And you, Mrs. Holt? Why, this must be a misprint. It says that you're... I'm 74. No. I was 74 last May. I find that hard to believe. <clears throat> I, I sent all the records, including our medical history, if you need anything else. Everything seems to be in order. You have a history of illness, Mr. Holt. Some. More than your fair share. A great deal of illness, I'd say. From time to time. I'm so sorry to hear that. And are you in pain now, Mr. Holt? Some. He's in great pain. It's fairly constant now. It doesn't seem to let up. I see. Which is one of the reasons that the New Life Corporation exists. But surely you can't remove pain. Only a doctor, or perhaps God, could do that. Not remove. Alleviate. Banish. We make it a thing of the past. After a while, our clients forget even the memory of pain. I, I wouldn't want any more drugs. No, we don't deal in pharmaceuticals. That's the province of the medical profession. What we deal in is youth, Mr. and Mrs. Holt. We deal in a resurrected life. Our stock and trade is simply, well, some call it rebirth. An apt word, and believe me, it's no exaggeration. Could you... Could you tell us what's involved? Easily. The process is quick, merely a matter of hours, and guaranteed painless. Guaranteed? But how? Precisely. We supply synthetic bodies. Bodies that are perfect in concept, composition, construction. Physiologically and psychologically, you'll find that you're just as you are now in every way, except in a different body. A younger body, in the prime of health, both materially and emotionally close to perfection. Um, th these bodies that you speak of... We construct them ourselves on the premises using only the finest components. Plastic, flesh, bone, steel. Did you say flesh? For some of the interstitial connections, we grow specialized cells for that purpose. They're permanently nourished to remain self-repairing and self-regenerating, supported by completely inert, non-corrosive materials. The wiring and circuitry are designed to duplicate the human neurological system, and the joints, such as the hip bones and knees, are almost totally invulnerable to disease or damage. So you see... How long do they... The lifespan of our units is roughly 112 years. <gasps> 100? You've been married for how long? 50 years. We had our golden anniversary just two months ago. That's... That's sort of the reason we finally decided to come here, isn't it, John? A rich life, a happy life, a full one, I'm sure I can see it in your eyes. And quite naturally, you don't want this relationship to end. Oh, it can't end. Martha, Martha is all that I've got, all I care about. Of course. Well, why don't I show you some pictures of the models we have available? No pictures. Well, they're very lifelike, all three-dimensional photography. My eyes, they aren't very good. In that case, why don't we go directly to the display cases, so you can view the finished product. May we? As long as you don't mind a brief walk. Not at all. If you'll please follow me, then. The showroom is just here in the hall behind my office. Oh, it's so beautiful. Would you like to take my arm, Mrs. Holt? That man under the lights. Is he one of your creations? The young man in the tracksuit? Why don't you ask him? Ask? 
But, but if he's only a, a mechanical device... Actually, he's programmed to answer with the aid of a voice chip. A temporary addition to make the display more lifelike. But as of now, he's still just a receptacle, a shell, waiting to be filled. There's no consciousness as such. He has a variety of preset responses, though. Go ahead. Ask a question. <clears throat> you there, young man. What are you doing? I'm training for the Olympic Triathlon. Wait till you see how fast I can run. My shoes are manufactured by Mercury Plastics. I come complete with a brand new pair and a gift package of home workout equipment, all courtesy of the New Life Corporation. Oh, my word. He looks so strong. <laughs> but I wouldn't need such muscles. I, I was never very athletic. A valid point. If physical achievement isn't important, then you might want to consider another model. Oh, who is the young lady? This is our queen of the Harvest Moon Ball. I see. She's very beautiful. Hello. I was the homecoming queen at my school, and now I'm a champion ballroom dancer. Do you like my evening gown? You're quite lovely, miss. I come with a fabulous selection of gowns, all custom designed. My shoes are part of the package, too, thanks to the New Life Corporation. Well, you are the prettiest girl I've ever seen. I could never wear such a dress. Of course you could. You did. Do you remember the dance where we first met? Oh, I was never so slim. But you were. Now oh, you're being silly. Please, let's move on. I think you'll like the next display. Ah, wh wh what's that? Look, John. There are two young people. Our beachcombers. His physique would be ideal for a man approximately 22 years of age. See the proportions and the musculature. Nothing too extreme. She has such a small swimsuit. The female component. Note how they complement each other. This particular model would be roughly 21 years old, three inches shorter than the male, of equivalent health and potential, capable of walking for miles along a beach. We've given them both a foot structure with the perfect arch and legs that are polymer reinforced. Look at the ankles. And the hands. My hands were never like that. Oh, yes, yes, they were, Martha. Don't you remember? We like to see these two go as a package. And you needn't worry that there'd be others like them. Each model is designed with distinctive features. None are exactly alike. How would, uh... Yes? Well, I'm not clear on the procedure. What would happen? I mean exactly. Very simple. We put you to sleep, and then we transfer all your memories, personality, and so forth into these replicas. You'll awaken in your new bodies and live a lifespan and a quality of life never dreamed of before with health, contentment, and purpose. And there's no pain? None. Are you sure? Are you sure there would be no pain? No pain, Mr. Holt. For the first time in... How long, I can only guess. You'd be free of pain. You'd be a young man again, in the prime of life. It's too much to believe. And you, Mrs. Holt, would be at his side. Instead of the end, it would be the beginning. Do you know what that means? What about the memories? Memories? They will be transferred in full. There's no loss. But the actual moment of Transfer. If a new life begins, then the old one must end. A kind of death for the mind, as well as the body. And so, uh, that is what I will experience, death. Are you afraid of dying, Mr. Holt? Not afraid. But if all that I have been comes to an end in this rebirth, it's not something for me to know. Perhaps that's even a good thing, to go to sleep at last. Oh, well, there's no loss of consciousness. The continuity is seamless. What you'll experience is a sudden dramatic change for the better. It may take some getting used to, but we have a counseling service available. The process itself is so simple, so uncomplicated, you'd really be quite amazed. Mr. Vance? Mr. Vance, you're wanted in the teleconferencing room. Would you excuse me for a moment? Yes, of course. Please, feel free to walk around, look at the other models. If you have any further questions, I'll be right back. We'll be here. John, it's like... A, it's like a miracle. Yes, maybe too much like a miracle.
What do you mean, John? Too much like a miracle. It just doesn't seem real somehow. But look, you can see what they've built. Not the technology, the thought of it. To live without pain, just the thought of that and nothing else. Ay, to be young again, to have it the way it was, Martha. Oh, yes, think of it. The second chance, the two of us, yes. we'd have it to do all over again. <laughs> you think you can stand me for another entire century? For a century or ten centuries. <mwah> Till death do us part, John. Till death do us part. I do apologize, folks. That was a call I had to take. We understand. Well, now, have you chosen? These two here... The young ones at the beach. An excellent choice. Two of the finest we have. Now, we could begin any time. How about tomorrow morning? Tomorrow, you say? What about... Yes. She means what about, our, well, you know, our, our present selves. Ah, I should have mentioned that. Your remains will, of course, be taken care of in any way you see fit. Whatever you've provided for in your wills. Burial, cremation. We don't encroach on the business of funeral homes. So you are saying that, well, that if we make the arrangements today, then tomorrow morning... <laughs> I'm an incredibly bad salesman. I forgot one of the most important points. The guarantee. Guarantee? But how? You can have the transformation on approval for one week. After the test period, if you're not fully satisfied, we can always... Exhume your old bodies. You mean our bodies will already have been... Not exhume in the usual sense. They will be held intact, preserved, if you will, in a precisely monitored, germ-free environment. If, for some reason, after the seven-day period, you decide against your new life, but you'd be surprised at how infrequently that occurs. Or rather, you wouldn't be surprised. We've had better than 98% satisfaction in the 12 years we've been operating... In that case, Mr. Vance, there, there is only one more question. How much, how much will it cost? There is no price given in your brochure. Why don't we go back to my office, where we can be more comfortable? It's this way. Uh, please excuse me. Uh, I think we'd better find out now. What is the price? The entire procedure, and that includes the guarantee and all services connected with the transfer would be 25 per person. 25? Thousand. So, for the two of you, it would be only... Fifty thousand dollars. That's correct. Quite reasonable, considering that there's nothing else like this on the market. By prorating it, Mr. Holt, in other words, figuring it on a basis of cost per year, I might say it's ridiculously low. I mean, 25,000 per 100 years of lifespan. Well, you can see how very economical it is. We've got nearly $25,000 in this envelope, Mr. Vance. We allow a 5% discount on multiples if they're purchased at the same time. The extended warranty is extra, but if I do say so, it's only prudent to... The 25000 is all we have. Can we make a partial payment? Partial. Well, we could pay this much in cash and then charge the rest. I'll be able to work again. You can take it out of my salary as much as you want until the balance is paid. I'm sorry, Mr. Holt, but my hands are tied. Government regulations prohibit any extension of credit in these matters. The transaction must be in cash. But that's all we have. It's all we have in the world. We've been saving and saving it. Why... We've done without practically everything. The doctor bills ate up almost all of our retirement account, but this money, this, this is pennies, nickels and dimes. Sometimes it was only one meal a day. No vacations, it was no movies, no going out for months. It was my wife wearing the same coat for years, the same dress over and over. I'm sorry, Mr. Holt. Believe me, I am. But these are the rules I have to follow. They don't allow me any leeway. There is, of course, one alternative. And what is that? We could perform the transference for just one of you. Yes. Yes, that's the way it should be. No. You, you have it done, John. Use the money for yourself and have it done. And I can wait. That's not possible. But I wouldn't mind waiting. 
Not in the least. No, no, Martha. It's out of the question. I couldn't do that, Mr. Vance. Are you married? No, I'm not. Then perhaps you can't understand, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid it would have to be the both of us or neither of us. We cannot be separated. We, we have to be together. One is no good without the other. Of course. I understand. Perhaps... Perhaps some other time. I remember that poem by Browning. Grow old along with me. The best is yet to come. The last of life for which the first was made. Give me your hand, Martha. I'm all right. Give it to me. So I can kiss it. Don't worry, Martha. I'll find a way. Hi there, mister. <clears throat> Hello. What'll it be? Ah, a, a drink, yes. I, I'll have a drink. Sure, sure, sit down. What? Oh, of course. What's the matter, Grandpa? Feet hurting you? No, no, no. Not, not my feet. Hm. Well, take a load off. What, what kind of drink? What kind? Uh, you name it. Beer, scotch? Scotch, yes. That, that will be fine. House brand okay? Pardon? Regular or special label? Which is less expensive? Don't worry, Grandpa. I got what you need. Make a new man out of you. Excuse me, I... Um, well, I've, I've heard. Uh, yeah? What, what have you heard? That there is gambling in some of these establishments. Is that what you heard? Well, you heard wrong. Gambling's against the law. Yes, I know, but I understand that if a man wishes to participate in a game of chance, there are private rooms. Not in here. This place is strictly legit. That'll be six bucks. Six? For the drink. Uh, ju just a moment. Say, Grandpa, what happened? You sell the farm? No, no, I sold nothing. Better be careful. There's some types around here I'd like to relieve you of that wad. Oh, I'll be careful. Very careful. Thank you. Where are you going? Oh. You know, I, I think I'll go home now. I don't feel well. Oh, hold on a minute. I, I gotta get your change. Okay. Yeah. All right, here you go. Seven, eight, nine, ten, twenty, thirty, and fifty. Thank you. Say, Gramps, you know that question you asked me about the private game? You know of such a place? Well, as a matter of fact, I just heard something. Might be of interest to a man like you. Is that right? See that door back there, uh, by the phones? Yes. If you was to knock on that door, there's a man named Faraday. He has a few friends over sometimes for a private party. And when are these parties held? Well, it just so happens there's one right now. Maybe he could help you out. As a special favor, tell him Rich said it was okay. Now you say I... Well, I, I suppose that would be all right. If you let him know, ahead of time... Give him the word and all. Oh, oh I, I see. Uh, you would like a tip. Will, will this suffice? Huh. Five bucks? Here, I, I can't see. Please, keep the rest of the change. Well, that's real generous of you, Grandpa. Faraday, big guy, bald head, wears a cashmere coat. I understand. If you want any more drinks, just let me know. I'll keep them coming. Thank you, young man. Hey, Grandpa, you didn't touch your scotch. Yeah? Mr. Faraday, please? Nobody by that name. But the bartender, he told me... Which bartender? I believe his name is Rich. Wait here. This is the guy. Uh-huh. Are you Mr. Faraday? What do you want, Pop? I'm told that I can gamble here. Gamble, huh? Well, that might be arranged. If you have something to back it up. You got a bankroll? Yes, it's all here. Yeah, it looks like you do. Horse come in? No, sir, I'm not much for gambling. Is it enough? Now, why don't you step inside? If it's all right. Place your bets. Insurance. Here we go, down the derby. What's your pleasure, dice, poker, red dog? I don't know very many games. I, I used to play a little poker. Did you now? 
when I was younger. Well, what do you know? There just happens to be a game open. There does? <laughs> we got a chair for you right over here. Are you sure you don't mind? Oh, don't worry about it. Come on, Pop. Have a seat. There you go. We have a new player, gentlemen. Let the games begin. Should I buy some chips? Oh, that's okay, Pop. Money talks. You sitting in, Faraday? Don't mind if I do. Oh, unless the new player has an objection. Why, no, it's your establishment, is it not? I should introduce you around. This is Mickey. Hi there. And Steve-O. Hi there. And, uh, the Count. How do you do? You are royalty, sir? Nah, they just call me that, cause... Cause he's the best card counter ever came in here. That's why we barred him from the blackjack table. But I let him stick around. He just loves cards. Yeah, yeah. Whose deal? All yours, Count. Shuffle them up real good now so Pop here has a square chance. You got it. Shouldn't we ante first? Listen to the man. Hey, we got a real poker player here. Yeah, it sure looks like it. You comfortable, old man? Oh, I... <clears throat> yes. Uh, perfectly. Because if you aren't, I can get you a pillow. For your back or whatever. Lay off, Stevie. He said he's okay. I just thought... Hey, cut the chatter and play cards, all right? The game is five-card draw. Jacks are better. Progressive. Jacks. Jacks or better. Uh, so that means I have to have at least two jacks or... Ah, you've played this game before, haven't you, Pop? It's been many years. Oh, wait, 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 wait. If you got any doubts, I mean, maybe you shouldn't do this. Uh, perhaps you're right, Mr. Faraday. You sure you want to be here? I... I just happened to need the money. Need it bad, huh? Very bad. Hey, are we playing poker here or what? Uh, hold it, I said. Don't anybody pick up your cards. Look, you know, Pop, there's two sides to every street. Yes? I mean, you can triple what you got in ten minutes. Or you can walk away from the table with a big fat goose egg. It's been known to happen. You don't have to explain. I understand. <sighs> You're the boss, Pop. Two jacks are better. You can't open Nobody gets him next hand, his queens are better, and so on. Ah, yes, it's beginning to come back. Deal him. Cut first. Go on, Pop, cut the deck. Beautiful. Here we go. To you, Faraday. Check. Now I'll open for ten bucks. Okay, ten it is. How about you? The smallest I have is a fifty-dollar bill. How much do you want to bet, Pop? Well, I suppose uh, I'll bet fifty. You mean you raise... I'll raise, yes. Too rich for my blood. I'll see him. You will? Forty to you. I know, I know. Let me think. Okay, I'll see it. Aren't you gonna raise him? You do it. No, thanks. Here's the forty. Cards? Take two. Mickey, one card. Make it a good one. Mm, two for me. It's up to you, fella. I have a question. Yeah, Pop? Is it required that I take any cards? Well, no. But if you think you can improve your hand... I believe I will play these. Oh, look at this. He's standing pat. Dealer takes... Four cards. Fifty dollars. Fifty? You heard the man. I'm out. No way. Me neither. Not with these cards. Your turn. I'll bet one hundred more. Oh, yours, fella. Unless you want to see him, Mr. Faraday. Yeah, not this time. That's it, Pop. Do I show my cards now? No, keep them down. Nobody called you, so you win. Just take the pot. I see, Mr. Faraday. Thank you. Thank you all. See, Pop? It's easy. Nice, friendly table. That's what we have here. All right, next deal. Same game. You, old man. You in or out? How much? One to call. One. Yeah, one thousand more. Unless you want to raise. I can't raise. I only have one thousand dollars left. Yeah, we know. Then I... <coughs> I... <coughs> oh, oh. You sick, Pop? I'm all right. No, no, you're not. It's between you and the old guy, Faraday. Excuse me for a moment. You're pretty bad off, aren't you? Uh, 
Long time? The last several years. I'm about to clean you out. You know that, don't you? I'm sorry to hold up the game. I, I'll feel better in a minute. Why do you need the money, Pop? It doesn't oh. matter now. No, oh, no. Go ahead. I'm interested. My wife, Martha, and I wanted new bodies. It cost $50,000. I only had half of it. But I botched it up. I'm no good at this. I'm no good at anything anymore. Just a tired, sick old man who can't walk to the corner without swallowing a pill, who leans on his wife when he takes three steps. Just a tired, sick old man, not worth anything to anybody. I wanted to be young again. I wanted to be strong. I wanted to begin all over. I wanted... I wanted to wake up one morning and get out of bed and not feel pain. That's all. You're raised, Pop. Then I... I call you. Look at that pot. Must be 20 grand. 25. Show him what you got. Read him and weep, old man. Pop first. I have these. Three big ones. Kings. At least he had something this time. Are you able to beat that, Mr. Faraday? Nope. Oh. You, you don't mean it. Be my guest. Game's over, Pop. You walk away. You came with 25, you leave with 25. Then, then I still have enough for one. Martha will understand. I, I, I can't help it. I, I can't live like this, not with the pain. She'll understand. I, I don't have any choice. I don't have any choice at all. Go on, Pop. Get out of here. Yes. Yes, thank you. Th thank you all, gentlemen, very much. What are you doing, Faraday? You know you had him beat. Let me see. Just like I thought. Three aces. Why'd you let him walk away? I'm not sure. But look at it this way. I'm even. We're all even. There'll be other games. Plenty of other games. Only... Not for him. Sorry to keep you waiting again. Martha. It's all right, dear. I understand. Do you? I told you before. You should be the one. This is the way it should be. Forgive me, Martha, please. Please forgive me. It was just I can't stand the pain anymore. Of course you can. Mr. Vance, John is ready now. Go ahead, my dear. They're waiting for you. Are you, Mr. Holt? Are you ready? Yes, I'm ready. Martha, I... I'll be waiting for you, my darling. Mr. Vance? Just a few more moments, Mrs. Holt. What is under the sheet? It's my husband, isn't it? Only his old form. Go ahead, take it on to preservation. Yes, sir. Your husband is fine. He'll be coming right out. Martha! Martha! Look at me! Oh, John! Oh, you look wonderful! Look at me, Martha! I, I could run a mile, I could do push-ups, handstands, anything, Martha! Look at how young I am! And no pain! No pain at all! No, thank you, Mr. Vance! Thank you and bless you! Don't thank me. Thank the surgeons. I promise you I'll never forget it. Martha, my darling, do, do you know what happens now, do you? You and I, Martha, now we'll really begin to live. We're going to do everything on God's earth we haven't been able to do. The big things, little things, the wild things, the crazy, illogical things. The things we were too old or too sick or too tired to do. Oh, oh that'd be wonderful. Do you understand, Martha? Every day is going to be a wedding day for us. Every afternoon a reception, every evening a honeymoon, and every seventh day an anniversary. Yes, darling. If only it could be. Martha, my darling, you and I are going to live for years, decades. We are going to... You will, John. You will. But I... 
Look at my hand. Next to yours. Look at it. It's old, John. It's so very old. Martha, no. I have some papers for you to sign, Mr. Holt. Would you come with me? No, what have I done? What have I done? You can carry it back to the display now. Right, sir. The beach scene? That's correct. Just as it was with the other. My husband. He's waiting for you, Mrs. Holt. Where? Through there, in my office. John. Martha. There you are. There is my husband again. My wonderful, wonderful husband. Martha, my dear, I, I must apologize. Oh, shush. You are my dearest one. Martha, if it must come with occasional pain, then so be it. I wouldn't have it any other way. My love. Remember, Browning. Grow old along with me, the best is yet to be, the last of life for which the first was made. Yes. Our times are in his hand. Who saith a whole I plan? Youth shows but half. Trust God. See all. Be not afraid. I'm not afraid. You know, John. Nor am I. From Cahil Gibran's The Prophet. Love gives naught but itself, and takes naught from itself. Love possesses not, nor would it be possessed. For love is sufficient unto love. Not a lesson, just a reminder from all the sentimentalists in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com, where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. The Trade-In, starring H.M. Winant and Peggy Weber, with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Christian Stolte, Doug James, Todd Manley, Andy Herman, Sarah Marks, Brooke Sanford, Rick Vargas, Vince Amari, Roger Wolski, and Carl Amari. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of the Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. <laughs>